Hi guys, it's Lunar. Welcome back to another daily console mod video for Skyrim Special Edition on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Today we're doing things slightly different in that we have two mods out right now. This one is mods 191, the other video is mods 190. The reason being that there are loads of smaller mods that I want to get through out of the way, and that's pretty much the only reason. Also guys, this video pretty much catches us up with PS4 mods, so tomorrow we will only have however many PS4 mods are out between now and tomorrow, which I'm not sure will be any. There could be one, there could be two. We could get surprised and get even more than that but there is a good chance where it won't be any at all anyway let's jump into these mods also guys it doesn't matter which order you watch this video and the last one our first mod is called Neocat Zeo's Resurrection Mod. The mod gives the player a mace that resurrects dead people when struck, restoring them. It allows PC and console players to quickly recover dead NPCs. According to the mod author, the mod is designed for things like when your town gets attacked by a dragon and half the town dies. Well, now the mod, you can revive NPCs. The mod does also work with any creature, so you can revive dead raiders, bandits, saber cats, woolly mammoths, as you can see in the video. Not dragons, though. You can, but they do respawn as invisible for some reason. In. I'm not sure if you can respawn them before they kind of lose their skin and they'll be okay, but I tried to do it when it was just a skeletal dragon and it was invisible. Anyway, still a really cool mod. Our next mod is called the Solution Non-Lethal Sword, and this is a very fun one. The Solution is a unique wooden sword with a base damage of 2, but a powerful paralyzing effect, which will knock out enemies for 1 hour at a time. In terms of the lore, the weapon was created by the Observer, crafted from a branch of a tree rooted in his realm of oblivion. It can be crafted at a forge with 2 firewood. The weapon is great for those doing a non-lethal playthrough, definitely a fun mod to play with though, I was just going around town knocking everyone unconscious. Our next mod is a simple one, and it doesn't replace the Dongard helmet, but adds an alternative light and heavy armor hood for you to equip instead of the Dongard helmet. As many people don't really like the way that the light helmet looks especially, and you don't really want to have a full heavy face covering helmet when you're wearing light armor. So now you can have the option to equip a hood. The hood keeps the same stats as the helmets, and they are craftable at the forge. So if you want a better looking alternative to the Dongard helms, then you could check out this Dongard hood mod. Our next one is a very small one, and it's a very cool one though. All it does is replace the elven armor with a new awesome looking glowing version. The stats of the armor are not affected in any way, this simply replaces the texture. Also you can download the exact same mod for elven weapons to replace them. I can't wait to see other weapons added from this kind of mod author that do the same thing for different weapons and armors. It is quite a big mod, it's like 90 megabytes for both, but definitely still a cool one to download. Our next mod is called Cooking Sinks to Player Level, and this mod aims to improve the effectiveness of cooking in the game. The mod enhances the usefulness of cooking, but it does not damage the balance of the game by doing so. So here are the changes that the mod makes. The dishes changed by this mod increase its effect as the player grows. For each level 5 of the player, you get 5 bonus points of effect. The maximum level of the effect is 100. So basically for every level you go up in the game, you get a plus 1 effect on the food, but it only adds to every 5 levels you go up. Dishes can have a maximum bonus of 100 levels, vegetable dishes and sweets have a bonus of up to 50 levels, soups and stools will restore health and stamina. On top of this, the mod adds in some dish recipes which were not included in the game. Leeks, potatoes and skeever all cooked. A fried egg was also added to the game from the mod author and to create it you simply use eggs that are found in the game already and you can cook them at the cooking station. Our final mod is called The Sanctum, and this mod adds a new player home into Whiterun. For features, the house comes with all the crafting stations and workbenches, a custom travel system, you can activate The Sanctum's light travel system for fast travel through Time Real, and that's kind of at the top of the tower, custom music, a couple of soundscape music tracks to enhance the mood, easter eggs, just simple stuff like books and secret doors to create a little history, Size, there's plenty of room for you and some followers. It's definitely not an empty castle. Storage, lots of custom named storage containers for all your organization requirements. Two vendors inside to buy and sell goods with. Mannequins and display cases. And overall, it's just a really cool looking place to live. Well, that's it for this mod video. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you check out the other video released at the same time as this one for six more mods. If you found today's video useful, a like and comment is very much appreciated. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe to see a lot more Skyrim content I have hundreds of similar videos to check out. If you haven't done so yet, turn on notifications as well to see videos as soon as they come out each day. But for now guys, you take care and have an awesome day.